The first law of community policing is that officer living in the community, being a, being a stakeholder and an invested in the community. So you won't, you won't bash Ray Ray in the head if you live down the street from him and you, and you get vegetables from his mother's store, right? You'll treat Ray Ray a little differently. And that's what community is all about, is it's having that understanding that we all, we all are one, right? Law enforcement officers and police officers and a lot of communities don't look at that. They want to get their overtime, they want to get their money, and they want to get the hell up out of there. We are to treat people like human beings. That's it. That's, that's basically this it. Everybody that you come in contact with is a human being. And you got to understand that trauma exists in our communities, whether it's in relationship to policing, whether it's in relationship to their life. There is trauma everywhere. So in policing, to change the culture, you got to be able to educate those officers coming on the job today as to the culture of police. Get them to know the areas in which they're going to police. Let them understand that this may be a different culture from yours, what you grew up in. Mm -hmm. And that take them out of the bubble. Because a lot of cops, when you get on the job, they get into this bubble thing. That the only people they deal with is cops. They go on vacation with cops. They go to parties with cops. They do everything with cops. And so therefore, they sort of like separate themselves from the actual human beings on the street. And so now you want to come to work, and now we are different than you because we're not in that bowl that you hang with all the time. Come out of the bowl. Walk through the communities. Talk to people other than those that you have that work relationship with. And not make them all your best friends, but continue to involve yourself with everyone. We cannot change the minds of bigots. We're never going to be able to do that. But we're going to govern you if you're going to be a police officer in any of these communities that we serve. I think that they've been brainwashed. I think that that's something that they teach them in the academy. It's us against them. Um, and I think that if they really cared about or remembered where they came from, their interactions with the community would be different. And so yeah, they should align themselves with the community. All police officers should. Um, but unfortunately, most of the time when they come in the community, it's not to play basketball, it's not to interact with the kids, it's not to attend cookouts or anything like that. They're usually coming in and, you know, they're being reactive. You know, they're not coming in to be proactive. I think the rule of thumb for anyone enforcing the law, not just black officers, is to be firm, fair, and consistent. I think that is the rule. Um, I always say that's the rule in anything you do in life, is to be firm, fair, and consistent. So the same way that you're going to deal with me, you deal with the white person the same exact way. Um, unfortunately, if there is a weapon on the ground and a white person picks that weapon up, they'll get tackled, taken to the ground, handcuffed, might even be taking the Burger King. You know, um, if I pick that weapon up, I'm surely getting shot as soon as I touch it. More law enforcement officers need to call out other ones when, when they're wrong. You know, I, I, I understand the, 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 the union aspect in it and um, that relationship in, in, protecting, in, in, in protecting the officers. But even when black cops are mistakenly killed, the unions come after us, make us the victim, right? Make us the bad guy. So, but we don't we, we don't see white officers come out when 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 officers do wrong, right? The, the blue wall of silence is is, is 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 still real. So, if law enforcement, and I'm saying this to all the law enforcement chiefs and and all these people that come out and they talk about the no snitch rule in the black community and everything, tell you what. Why don't law enforcement give up their bad guys and then the black community will give up their bad guys? That's how it should be. Because until, until law enforcement does that with the black community, the black community will never trust law enforcement, even if they got black or good officers standing there. How can the community ever believe in you knowing that you're standing up for that type of behavior? If you can't call something like that wrong, then no one's going to trust you. So we as the police officers, what we have to do is when it's wrong, we have to say it's wrong. We have to say that officer misbehaved and we don't stand by this behavior. Not only is he going to be suspended, but we're going to do X, Y, and Z to prosecute him according to the letter of the law. 
and tell them, listen, we have all these programs, coffee with a cop, all these nice programs, and they're cute, they're nice, whatever. <laughs> I'm sorry, that didn't sound right. That's cute. I'm That's sorry. Cute. That wasn't That's my cute. intention. But <laughs> they are cute. <laughs> but the yeah. thing is, it's not the meat and potatoes. The, the copy with, coffee with a cop is fine because you get to interact with the cop and all that. That's cool. But when these things happen in the community, and the community see a wall of blue officers saying, we stand behind that officer and their behavior, then you have a problem. Until you fix that, it's never going to be right. That, yeah. no, that, no, and, snitch, and that no snitch situation. Yeah. Let, let me say this. It, you can't be telling people in the community, we want you to tell us what's going on. And that, that no snitching policy in the community shouldn't exist. Well, it shouldn't exist on the police department either. So you can't say that we, shouldn't, um, we should snitch or we should come forward with information. Mm -hmm. And so we want you to come forward with information if you're a police officer. If your colleague is wrong, it's wrong. And nobody should try to cover up or stand up or we're going to support the blue when they're even wrong. That's why the community don't trust you. That's yeah. why the separation yeah. continue and exists. It's going to continue, continue. It's going to widen because you say just that. We're going to support you when you're wrong. These unions need to get a grip because if your officers are wrong, they're wrong. And they need to be able to stand up and say, our officer was wrong, instead of the cover-up. And when you go out to our communities and say shooting a black man unarmed down is okay, that's a problem. You know, oddly enough, my, my father never really talked about what he did at work. But me knowing individuals who were locked up where he was would always say to me, hey, I met your father inside there. He's a real nice guy, um, treats everybody fair, you know, and anytime something's going on, we know that if, if he's there, everything's gonna go right. So, and these were people who were incarcerated in there. So you can't go wrong with that, because you know, they'll tell you quickly how they feel about an officer. Treat people like you want to be treated. That's, my father preached that to me since I was a little girl. And I grew up with that, and that's how. And I deal with murderers, and I still treated them like human beings. And most times, they confessed to me. You know why? Because I treated them like they were human beings, and that's what you gotta do. We look at trying to make a change in the way the, the system treats people in the community so that there is a better relationship between the two. But we always recognize the system is not made to work specifically for us. It's made to, to work against us. Well, you gotta look at what the history of policing was. Who was policing? Slave catchers, basically. And so basically, that type of policing back in those days were to catch people that looked like us yes. who were trying to get away from oppression. And so now as it evolved, as supposed to be the protectors of the communities, black, brown, and poor people, even poor white people get assaulted by police. There's, there's studies that show that white communities are policed different than black communities. But I, you know, I, I blame part of that on the black people in the community because they don't de demand that their community be policed right, right? The police are paid by the taxpayers. The police are, are, are paid by those people in the community. They need to have demands on the elected officials. How are their community policed? The black community is the only community in the United States that don't have no say in how their community is policed. They tell them how their community is policed. You go in these white communities, someone get, a police officer get a ticket wrong and the city council member is packed, right? The city council meetings are packed for a ticket, for a ticket. We don't do that in the black community. And we need to start um, holding, holding ourselves accountable. See, black lives won't matter to white people until black lives matter to black people. And, and when we start doing that, then we'll see a change in our community and the policing in our community.